I'm Sir Tap Tap, and let's play Monolith. This is a roguelike twin stick shooter sort of deal. And while roguelikes aren't usually my deal, this is a pretty dang good one. And um, it has some very strong Binding of Isaac inspiration. I think that both kind of helps it not feel bad and kind of also, you know, has the good high points of uh, Binding of Isaac sort of progression. So this is obviously the intro here. I really love, this game has a really good feel of like, uh, I know I kind of say I don't really like the NES sort of vibe, but this this does it really damn well. This kind of, it, go, it uses the NES style color palettes really well, and uh, it's pretty accurate in terms of its, its pixel size and everything. But um, it just looks really damn good. For some reason, it starts with the um, the bilinear filter on by default, which, or at least I think the update did that, because I used to have that off, I'm sure, and it just was suddenly on. Uh, it had an update. If you played this game before, it has this update called After the End, which adds, uh, you know, a sort of a post game, kind of like Binding of Isaac. You know, there were levels after the last level. It did that sort of thing. Um, it also has some good options here. You can put on a CRT shader if you want scan lines if you want to. I'm gonna leave most of that off. Uh, I really do like that it has, uh, it lets you disable UI flicker and um, you can sort of tone down the flashing effects with the photosensitivity option. You can reduce the shake cam, which I usually, I'm not a big fan of screen shake, honestly. Excuse me, Parker. Um, oh, you can see your hitbox! I didn't even notice that. I'll leave that on. Um, yeah, I have beaten the game just barely. I didn't really expect to, honestly. But, uh, it was a, just a couple of runs ago, actually. So that green little dot is our hitbox. I kind of expected my hitbox was the whole ship, because it's kind of a chunky one. Hey, buddy. So this is our advice cat. After a couple of runs, you get your advice cat. He gives you little random tips on, um... He'll give you a tip on what you died on. He'll give you a tip on random levels, on random weapons. Just random stuff. But uh, he's also the kind of, um, you know, the roguelike progression system. You get, you basically you have cumulative amounts of uh, this money unit that you have, and you can buy stuff here with. Um, it doesn't matter if you spend or save the money, uh, just your total cumulative is added to this sort of post-game, like, external currency that you pay that guy with and you unlock. Like, just like Binding of Isaac, it just adds items to the pool. Uh, there's also some cool stuff in the post-game feature, which I haven't unlocked yet, so I'm not entirely sure how all of that works. But, uh, I do know there's a sort of hard mode if you, uh... There's these four symbols you have to collect, and I think they unlock after beating the final boss for the first time. And I assume that much like Isaac, there's some kind of like, even more final boss. I always really liked that in Binding of Isaac, how it kind of always felt like you were making progress, because it really, when you beat Mom's foot for the first time, it really did feel like you had just beaten a final boss. And then there's another boss that just feels, it feels like you're fighting the final boss for real multiple times. And I've never really had a game, you know, really successfully give you that feeling before. And I guess that's a good way to get somebody into the whole roguelike thing, because, you know, there's this tendency to make them way too freaking hard. And I mean, this is not an easy game, but I would say it's pretty manageable, especially if you've played, you know, a decent amount of shoot 'em ups Oh, the music's really good, too. Like I said, the <laughs> it has this really good feel of uh, an NES game, but not really the bad parts. I know not everybody agrees that there are bad parts of NES games, but there definitely, definitely are. Um, it's one of those things where you have to execute it really well, and most people do not execute well. This game really does execute both the chiptune and pixel art extremely well. So, let's explain some mechanics. Oh, that's, we'll get that upgrade later. I usually try to save my upgrades. So, kind of like Binding of Isaac, you have health. Um, you have both maximum health and your current HP. Uh, Fireball is actually pretty good. 
think the floor is done. A, a quirk of this game is you can teleport to any level or any part of the room that you've cleared before. Yeah, let's get the upgrade. I like how the upgrade room's kind of creepy. It, like, jams down on you and, uh... Yeah, we'll go with fortune. It has eerie thumping. So be it. Yeah, I, I, a fortune is a pretty good one. Um, so you have different weapons in this. You have different upgrades that you can get. Uh, there's also bombs, which work like standard shoot 'em up bombs. They clear all the stuff on the screen. They do not do a particularly large amount of damage. Ow. But um, they're, they're also... So that means it's in the secret room. Uh, again, wait a minute. Oh, that's not good. This room, this floor does not have any obvious place for the secret room. There it is. See, a secret room has rules just like Binding of Isaac. Um, it will pretty much always spawn where there are... Wait, really? Oh, the shop must have it. I'm looking for the key. Ah, totally missed that. When he, anytime there's a vault, it has a bunch of really good items in it. And um, there's always a key somewhere on the floor. It's either in a shop, a uh, drop from a random room, or the hidden... The uh... Let's just show you different weapons. The fireball is actually really good, the weapon I had before. But I'll go with the revolver. It's kind of a more standard weapon. I like the creepy music in the secret room. There's, there's obviously... It's kind of strange that the, the, the first area has this happy-go-lucky music. Um, from from the story you might have gathered, it's not really a super happy-go-lucky kind of game. It kind of, again, has that Binding of Isaac grimness. Not quite as, you know, silly and poop as uh, Binding of Isaac, but there's some skeletons, there's some spooky, scary faces, there's some screaming enemies. Um, it's kind of a bit more serious with its spooky than Binding of Isaac is. But would you say Isaac is not serious? Uh, Isaac is kind of an... Interesting thing. I don't think anybody but Edmund could have made that game. Um, yeah, the music kind of progresses as you go through. Also, these enemies, I always forget that these are even enemies until I see them open up. I've thought, been like, I've cleared a room and been like, wait, why aren't the doors open? And it's always because one of those suckers are uh, still alive. So when they're closed, they just look like stage elements. As you can see, these little ghost friends. There's some other things that look a bit more spooky and Binding of Isaac -y later. I also like these weird little desperado dudes. They don't entirely look like they belong here. Ow. So dash does not go through. Like, you have a dash, but it's really just a quick movement. You can upgrade it later on. Ooh. Yeah, I'll go for that. Um... Also, secret rooms are generally pretty easy to find in this game, um, both because of that uh, logic that I told you about earlier. Those things are such a huge waste to use ammo on. Um, when you use a special weapon, you have ammo. Otherwise, you have infinite ammo for your basic weapon. But, um... <clears throat> it never feels good to have to take out trash mobs with, like, something like the revolver. So now I have max bombs. You can have up to six bombs. And um, with a certain upgrade, you can actually auto-bomb. I'm a big fan of auto-bomb. I think I've mentioned in every shoot 'em up that has auto-bomb, and a few that don't have auto-bomb. That, that's one of my favorite accessibility sort of features in um, a shoot 'em up. Because I, I'm pretty bad at using bombs, and I tend to, uh, uh oh. Amazed I did not take a hit there. Um, I tend to have the, the, the reaction to hit the bomb button after I take the hit, and never before, because I always want to save my bombs, but then I end up not using my bombs. It's dumb. I need to just... If anything, my number one tip is to just bomb. It's better to bomb when you don't need to than to not bomb when you did need to. So if you feel like you're going to take a hit, just drop that bomb. Just drop that lovely thing. See, so yeah, uh... 5% damage increase. The damage increases in this game are very stingy compared to Isaac. 
Uh, this game is much tighter balance-wise than Isaac. Um, Isaac has lots of like crazy, ridiculous, overpowered stuff, and um, you tend to go, you tend to upgrade your damage five to ten percent at a time. Uh, those halos on certain enemies means that my weapon does extra damage to them. Ooh, ten percent damage I increase. Some weapons, re weapons are randomly generated. It's my expect from you know. Um, I do not know what I got. I was... Were there four items in that room? I... I was reading the text from another thing. I don't even... I just seem to have the same kind of weapon I had before. It's not too exciting. Um... I forgot what I was saying. Oh, crap, those things. See, when you kill the sphincters, these things, these swarmers come out. They're called, like, hosts or something, but come on, they're, they're, they're sphincters. Um, do I have the key? Yes, I do. Oh, and health is interesting. This game does a really good job of not having anything be wasted. So if you pick up an ammo thing when you have full ammo, uh, it will convert it into money. And if you pick up a health when you already have full health, like a healing item, um, it adds a part. I think once you add four parts, as you can see, I have three parts right now. They're those little orange chunks next to my HP at the top. Um, oh, pff, that was stupid. Presence is always towards the top, I should have known that. Um, um, once you add four parts, I think, you get one more current HP and one more full H, or like one more max HP. <clears throat> so if you get four health items that you don't need, you get a free health upgrade. Which is really cool. Well, not free, obviously. Uh, and if you get bombs when you can't have bombs, um, I believe you get... I think that gives you debris. I'm not sure if it... I don't think it gives you a part. Um, the game has lots of really interesting forgiveness and, and like, settings like that. Or not settings, but ow. Um, for instance, if you use up your bombs, notice how my... Uh, notice how the first two bombs are highlighted? That's your um, bomb cap, they call it. And uh, if you are below your bomb cap, you'll regenerate one third of a bomb every room you, that you can clear. So you can always get the secret room in this game, unlike Isaac. You can usually, with reasonable bomb use, you can almost always get it in Isaac. But this game is even more friendly about that. Ow. I hate these freaking things. I always get hit. The, the icicles always start at the top. I should. There's always ways to handle these enemies. Uh, there's just some that I'm less used to dealing with. I'm actually much better at dealing with the bullet hell enemies than I am dealing with the, you know, suddenly something spawns enemies. So the interesting thing about the, the secret room, it will not spawn, like, in this area below. You have to ha have access to these three tiles. Um, so it might be here on the left. It is. Um, I had a feeling about that. Ooh. Um, an unfortunate thing about going into the secret room or anywhere with uh, a power-up. If a power-up spawns on screen, it will not be there if you go back. You have to either take it or leave. Um, but fortunately, um, like I said earlier, there's some sort of forgiveness features where if you take an item that you don't have a use for, you still get some sort of benefit. Ooh. Oh, the key counts as an item. I've, I'm not sure I've ever seen the key spawn in a weapons depot before. Dang, that was a pretty good room. So we have a pretty good amount of health. Um, 13 is usually about the most I tend to have. I'm not super good, but I have beaten the game, like I said earlier. Um, so you have to beat these mini-bosses on every stage to open the actual boss door. You can't just rush straight to the boss. They're usually not too difficult. Um, ow. It's easy to take a hit, and they will spawn 1 HP. Um, or they'll spawn, if you have full HP, they'll spawn a uh, damage thingy. Or, no, an ammo thingy. Speaking of... Salvage extra weapon. So the upgrades from this thing are really good. Um, some of them are only kind of okay. Like one of them is just like one bomb. 
It's kind of dumb, it's even in the rotation. Uh, but this one's really good because it gives you two HP instead of just one and more debris for salvaging a weapon. Every time you get a weapon when you already have one, you basically get uh, one of those forgiveness things I told you about where the, you know, you get stuff because you, you know, have to throw something away. Um, and I actually think I'm gonna go for that one. So now if I were to get a weapon before I dropped that one, which I couldn't because I only had three ammo, um, I would have gotten two health HP and extra debris. And this game does a pretty good job of encouraging you to clear all of the rooms, uh, especially since I have that thing that increases your drops. Oh. Okay, special offer! Um, do I just keep these? Okay, thanks. Um, so this is one of those uh, symbols I was talking about, actually. I didn't know it was in the shop. Am I dealing damage? Yes, I am, I think. I think. What am I- what am I targeting? He has Facebook hands for weapons. Uh, I think I'm hitting the symbol. Yeah, I hit the symbol. Oh, it's the- I'm reducing the price by shooting it. That's actually pretty cute. Uh, I didn't know this was in the game. This is a surprise. So the first one of these symbols I got just for beating the game, I figured I was just gonna beat the game four more times and then unlock it. Uh, but actually- oh wait, no, there was one in the shop. There's one in the shop, uh, for a bunch of money. Um, the permanent item shop, not the, uh, in-game shop. Ow. Crap. Okay. So you have to collect it, I see. Pfft, buy shopkeep! It's cute that you get to keep all of his stuff. Um... So I took a lot of damage in that fight, but I, I got a permanent upgrade out of the deal. Oh god, I hate these things. So those things are very rude because they explode into tons of damage. Or tons of, like, huge bullets. Oh, fuck. So one of the reasons I tend to take those uh, upgrade shrines late... I shouldn't call them shrines, this is a different thing that's called a shrine. Uh, the reason I tend to take those late is because there's a couple of upgrades that can be really useful but only in specific situations. There's one called Second Wind that fully heals you and fills your ammo. Um, I would really love to have one of those right now. Um, I should probably be alright. This game is pretty forgiving in terms of how much health you get. Um, though you can also lose damage really quickly as you saw in that last boss fight. Uh, you don't really have too many invincibility frames. Did I? Uh oh. So pausing, or opening the map does not pause the game. So I kind of... That would have been scary if I had forgotten about that. So I don't know what this guy does. They, they get fire over their heads. I assume they deal, like, if they have more HP or something, maybe, when this guy connects to them? I don't really know. I can't imagine what else it would do, because they don't seem to shoot more bullets. And they can't deal more damage. At least I don't think the game would deal more than one damage to you. Did I...? Did I claim my upgrade? I did. Alright, boss time then. So this would be a little scary, but... Um... Oh wow, you don't have much HP at all, do you? Um... Whoa! How, how, how dare you? I should really be using more bombs. Um... This guy reminds me of Vector Man boss, those hands. Um... Oh. Uh... I was gonna say a thing. Oh yeah, but you get you get health pretty often. Like I said, every every boss gives you one health, one ammo, and one bomb. Every sub boss tends to give you one HP. You have forms, I see. So there's a bunch of different bosses, like just like Isaac, like well, most of rogue likes. Not every rogue like design thing is an Isaac thing, but uh... ow, we're not in the best shape. But we're still clinging on here. I was figuring I would at least get to the final boss. I kind of doubt I'll beat the final boss in this run. But I don't think you really need to see every... Oh god. I think if we at least show you the final boss, you'll have gotten a pretty good impression of this game. I really like this. Um, it's probably fairly apparent, but... Uh, I need to train myself to use more bombs, especially since... If you always have low bombs, like I said, the, the bombs regenerate. The only real reason you'd want to stock up tons of bombs... Thank you. Uh, 
Um, there is an auto bomb item that only activates if you have more than two bombs. Oh, speaking of the, the whole forgiveness aspect of this game, um, hold on. Oh, so I had a, the, one of the reasons I beat, I should show you a clip of this. One of the reasons I beat the final boss in this game is I had a laser that was not only triple lasers, but it had ricochet off walls. So there's like six lasers every time I fired and it did crazy damage and it didn't beat the boss for me, but it was very helpful. Now I lost what I was going to talk about. Oh yeah, but um... Um... No. No, I... Go away, Thwomps. They calm down. Stage hazards calm down once you clear the room, which is a nice touch. Um... Um... I was going to say something about how the game kind of has some forgiveness -y features. Was it the bomb thing? Yeah, you get one third of a bomb if you're under two bombs. That's why the first two are different color. I should just be using more bombs, honestly. I also have one... I'll never get to use those parts, but if I kept getting health... I think I talked... Yeah, I talked about that. But if I kept getting health, I'll get another HP. I don't need more ammo. Also, those portals lead to the other portals of the same color. We haven't seen too many of those, damn it. <clears throat> One bad thing about the laser, very slow. I actually kind of prefer the standard weapon. If you get this upgrade, there's an upgrade that will increase the um, both damage and the spread of your default weapon. Um, if you get that, it's kind of almost better than some of the, you know, good, so to speak, weapons that require ammo. This laser is very good, but you know, all the weapons kind of have a little bit of a trade-off. This one's really not too great, damn it, with swarms. Please tell me you have second wind. Please tell me you have second wind. You don't have second wind. That really only gives one bomb. I was hoping maybe that was phrased badly and it gave you multiple bombs. Because I think there's one called Power Bomb that gives you a full set of bombs, but that must be a different one. So I'm not in the best of shape, but unless I get the Ice Worm... Actually, I don't think I can get the Ice Worm. I think Ice Worm was last boss. Ice Worm was my first major obstacle in this game. I lost to it like every time. It's a pretty tough boss. These guys have, like, straight line attacks, and there's actually something you can get to, uh, negate certain, like, electrical attacks. There's different, like, elements that enemy stuff has, and there's certain things you can do about certain kinds of attacks. Like, fire gets blocked by water. <laughs> He's got bandages just because I beat him up last time! That's awesome. I'll take that, and holy crap, that is expensive. Yeah, I have... I have a lot of money. I'll just get that, because that gives me 2 HP. I'd forgotten I'd got that upgrade. I need more weapons! If I get more weapons, I get 2 HP each, as long as I have a weapon currently. So, I really need to get some more guns. That would save me, mostly. I doubt I would beat the uh, final boss with only, like, 10 HP, unless I had lots of bombs, an auto bomb too, maybe. Or a really good weapon. But, um... Right, let's be smart about this. It can't be that one. It can be this one. Oh! You joshing me, mate? Are you kidding? Okay. I don't- I have no idea where the secret room is then. Yeah, sometimes there's- <clears throat> In Isaac, there's usually only one or two places the secret room could be. Uh, the later maps in this game get quite big, as you can see. So, uh... Max HP thing. Oh. Oh, it does heal me. Oh, I thought those... I just kind of assumed those... Since they only say max HP, I just kind of assumed they didn't actually heal you. There are some things that will do stuff like that. Oh, excuse me. There's also a health shop, kind of like Isaac. Um, it actually steals your full HP, your max HP, not your current HP. Unless you're at max HP, obviously. Um, you know, it's kind of like a devil deal, though they're not really as... 
well, they're not remotely as good as double deals, frankly. Um, I've very rarely ever taken them, but it does give you this, the interesting sort of strategy of there's times where you can trade a max HP for a current HP, or more ideally, you could trade like one or two max HP for three current HP, which uh, that can be a pretty good. I'm out of bombs. This is a bad boss to be out of bombs on. Okay. As you can see why, I might not survive that. <laughs> ah, crap. Well, that's Monolith. I was hoping to show the final boss here, but uh, I might do another video and show you the final boss. Well, I could show you my run where I had the lasers. I think I recorded most of the boss. <laughs> Incinerated by fire. I kind of like this, um, this little thing. If you get a high score, it shows you flying bas past your high, your last high score. That's another little ghost chip. It also has a cute little ranking system where it judges you on hits taken and other stuff. And I think I got like a B rank. I think I got these trophies here for getting A ranks on, uh, I think clearing rooms and like defeating N. I, I don't know what they're all for then. Ghostly squeal! Hello friend. Oh, there's also a bestiary, which I love when games do this. So you can see little bits about all of the enemies, and some of them have like teeny bits of lore. It gives little details on some of the bosses. All right, the uh, the boss, <laughs> the shopkeep is in there now. Bloke, mech. He he was a mech. He's got a special offer for you. So now I have. Hmm. So I assume getting all of those seals will get me that extra game mode or unlock access to the next floor. So I should probably be able to get to that pretty soon. I might do another video, but I guess th that shows off the game pretty thoroughly, doesn't it? Uh, I really enjoy it. This is Monolith again. Um, it had an update after the end. Like it was, a, it's not like a DLC. It's just like a big free content update. That uh, I think that adds the second floor, or not the second, but the, the new floor, and so a bunch of extra bosses and all that crap. Um, and I, this is pretty cheap too. Let me let me double check. I think it's like eight bucks on Steam. It is super worth it. Um, I'm not usually a big fan. I'm I'm a fan of shoot 'em ups, but not a fan of roguelikes. And this it feels enough shoot 'em up, and it feels fair enough to uh, not infuriate me. What I really don't like in roguelikes is when you have like very little health and like you die to something you've never seen before and it's just like an instant death because you know you just never seen that before and you don't know how to deal with it and in this you kind of have enough health and bombs and stuff to get around most situations so it really feels more skill based and less random. I feel I've earned, I earned all of my deaths in this game. There's a few hits I've taken here and there that I feel you know well, when you have 10 HP, getting one hit is like a learning experience. It's not like complete BS. But in roguelikes where you have like one or two HP, I uh, I don't tend to like those. Anyway, that's Monola. Wasn't sure if I displaced it or not, but hey, why the heck not? This is the, that video of that boss. I recorded it anyway just to show off how crazy good this weapon was. Um, it's harder to tell on this boss, but it, it reflex lasers in like all directions if they hit a wall. I think it might even bounce off the boss, because it's like making like... Like all of those lasers, the orange lasers you see, that's all me. That's not actually the boss. And this guy took at least twice as long to go down that phase um, before. I was playing pretty decently, but I would say at least half this win is probably because just really good weapon and I happen to get here with pretty good health and uh, auto bombs and full bombs. Things sort of start to hit the fan at this point, but uh, I tend to lose at least, like, if I'm going to beat this fight, I, I need at least, like, 10 health is how I figure it, at least currently. Uh, he's pretty, he's dodgeable, but definitely not an easy boss, I think you would agree. Um, for, I, I kind of benefit from when things are bullet hell, like, I kind of, I'm used to the patterns and stuff. Uh, so bullet hell bosses like that don't really catch me off guard too much. They're not exactly easy. Yeah, that's me beating the game. And I guess I'll show you the little. I think I record the little 
credit sequence or the thing you get. So yeah, those are, those are the four symbols I was talking about. So I have access to three of those. I bought, I got two now, and I can get one from the shop deep from the cat. I don't know where the other one is. Uh, if it's following the story, oh, there we go, Grim Arbiter. My rank is B. <laughs> I got hit four times, but uh, but yeah, then I unlock a bunch of stuff for beating the game, as you would tend to expect. But yeah, that was Monolith, and uh, I might do more videos. I don't know. Maybe I'll stream sometime. 